Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at LEDs, a way to light your 3D printer in an easy practical way that doesn't take forever to set up and doesn't fall apart after a few months of being a little bit warm. So let's get stuck in. If you've tried to illuminate your 3D printer or general work area or something previously, you've probably looked into using LEDs and come across something like this, which is a, an LED strip. Basically, a number of LEDs on a flexible strip, which seems like a really practical, easy solution. They're pretty low cost. You just stick them in, wire them up, job done. Well, they're not quite that easy and they're not really that great are they? So the first problem that I generally have with these is soldering to the little pads. They do vary quite a bit in size. The ones on this one are actually not too bad but you start to look at smaller things like near pixels with a high density or something and the pads are so small and difficult to solder to that either it just ends up as a total mess or it just doesn't really work very well. The second problem and probably the biggest is that the tape used to secure these two things just never really works. It sort of works for maybe a little bit, maybe a couple of days, a couple of months, maybe even a bit more, but especially in a 3D printer, which is typically a fairly warm environment, or even if it's near to and it's not enclosed, it is still a warm environment and they tend to last even less long. What I think we need to do is solve this problem with a different solution. We need to get rid of these annoying tiny little connectors, which we use to wire things up, and this annoying tape which never really sticks to anything. One way we can solve this is with this. This is called Daylight on a Stick and it's a 24 volt chainable LED strip. So it's a bunch of LEDs on a rigid glass fiber PCB with connectors at both ends. You can connect these one side to the printer and one side to another set of LEDs and repeat and so on. Obviously you don't wanna go for hundreds of sets or anything daft, a few sets around your printer if that's what you want to do. What I've got here is actually a slight mod that I've created, which I've called Daybreak, which is kind of similar, and integrates a couple of different changes. The first is it doesn't use daylight accurate LEDs. The reason being those are quite expensive comparatively and not that easy to get hold of. They also are not really necessary. High color accuracy lights are used for things like photography and video, where color accuracy and representing colors across multiple different screens and all this kind of stuff is very important part of the work. In 3D printing, you just wanna be able to see your 3D prints. The color of the white light, as long as it's kind of white, is probably gonna be absolutely fine. Obviously, we wanna avoid things that are like super cold blue or super warm white, kind of orangey almost, but somewhere in the middle, looks absolutely fine and doesn't really negatively impact anything. So what I've done is integrate those slightly different type of LEDs onto this strip and slightly increase the number too. You'll probably have noticed that that also has mounting holes at both ends. So you can use an M3 screw to screw this pretty securely to pretty much anything you like. And I've also got some example brackets which I'm gonna be using on my upcoming Voron 2.4 build. Size-wise, they're 270 millimeters long and 11 millimeters wide. So they're suitable for all of the Voron size printers. So like the 250, 300 and 350 size, I believe it should fit Trident and V2.4. I'm planning to do perhaps a smaller one for the V0 in the future. But for now, this is the size we have. In terms of brightness, these LEDs are ridiculously bright. Like really almost burning your eyes out if you look at them for too long bright. So as a quick test to just demonstrate, we'll pound them up at the normal system voltage. So this is basically at 100% PWM and you'll see just how bright they are. There you go. <laughs> it's pretty blooming bright and that's obviously overpowering all of the studio lighting that I've got in here. It's really, really bright. So they do run quite warm if you power them at 100% brightness, uh, but typically within your pre 3D printer, 3D printer, you're not gonna need this maximum level brightness. Something around 50% brightness is gonna be more than enough. And around 30%, they run only like one or two degrees above that ambient temperature. As you can see, in terms of color accuracy, they are quite a cool white. 
but they are also still feeling like quite a natural sort of workshop light. As you can see, it makes an enormous amount <laughs> of light. The connectors we use on these are JSTXH, so they're pretty common within 3D printers. You should have terminals and connectors for those laying around. And the wire gauge doesn't need to be anything too high. As you saw, the current is only around 0.3 amps, so not very high. So in terms of wiring these up to your 3D printer, you've got a couple of options. You can either connect to a fan output header or a heater MOSFET connector. Both of those are quite differently rated, so you do want to be careful that it's suitable for the amount of current you're going to be drawing. A single stick at 100% is around 0.25 to 0.3 amps. So about five watts at 24 volts. If you're gonna have multiple sticks in your 3D printer, you obviously multiply the current by the number of sticks. If you're gonna run at a PWN, multiply the decimal of the percentage by that in order to get that actual current. So 50% takes it down to half, two strips of LEDs doubles it. Hopefully that helps. Typically your heat output is gonna be the best place to wire up if you're having a lot of LEDs as they're typically rated for higher currents. However, you might only have one or two of these on your control board, so there may not be one available. In which case, look to do maybe a single strip on the fan header if that's appropriately rated for the 0.3 amps that you need. For your homework today, you can let me know down in the description if this 270 millimeter length is good for your size printer, or if you're looking for something a little bit shorter let me know the length that you're interested in. Also, would you like some NeoPixel versions that we can do all sorts of RGB on? Let me know. We'll see what we can do. So that's going to be it for me today with the Daylight Daybreak Mod PCB LED Light on a Stick video. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to grab one of your lights on a stick via the link in the description, and I'll see you next time.